G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Wednesday, about 10.30 in the morning, and the market has risen a little bit, which is good, but it's also dropped just a little bit in the very last sort of hour or so. So we're still at $1.7 trillion, there's so many stories I have to try and get through today. Uh, most of them really seem bullish, so again, this is going to be, it's not easy to make a lot of money. If you've come here thinking you're just going to chuck your money in and overnight it's going to turn into hundreds, thousands and millions and there's not going to be, you know, some mad volatility both going up, up and coming down that's going to try and shake you out, well then you just weren't ready for crypto because at the moment, you know, someone who bought at 62000 and found themselves down at 53000 probably panicked a long time ago and already sold. If, if they don't have those hands of steel and don't understand investing and yeah, how volatile it can be, investing in general can be volatile like that. But when you come to cryptocurrencies, it really can be. It's the most extreme of both. The highs are unbelievable and the lows are just, <laughs> they're unbelievable as well. <laughs> they are really, really tough to deal with. And again, we spoke yesterday that it seems from on-chain data, a lot of the this volatility at the moment is it's new money. They've come in and they just can't handle it. They were unlucky and they bought near a peak and it started to dip and then they've panicked and they've sold. And that's why we've got this red going on here. I mean, we're still up 8% over the last seven days, but just not as high as what we previously had been. All right, so as we can see, there's a bit of a mixed bag here. We can see some nice green though, and look, even XRP's had a bit of a move, and we'll get on to a couple of stories about XRP and one of them about the move. Cardano, got some more good news about Cardano, and look, it, it peaked very, very quickly. It just jumped, and look, it could keep going. We'll just have to wait and see. But mixed bag, there's definitely some losses and some gains in there. All right, BTC, sorry, BTC dominance just under 60%. ETH dominance just under sort of 12%. And gas prices, again, starting to go up. So people are starting to use Ethereum. Again, whether that's people getting into, you know, things like USDT or USDC or getting out now and buying the dip, it's hard to know which one's going on. But there's definitely some people buying the dip. I can guarantee you that right now. But also there's definitely people that, you know, are the cause of the dip at the moment and they're simply selling out of fear. If they're selling because they're in profit and they just want to get some profits back, great. But if you're selling at a loss, you know, unfortunately you are what is considered dumb money and we all started as dumb money. So please don't get too uptight about that. I've been dumb money before and on occasions I'm still dumb money now. It's not like you ever just completely go away from dumb money. We can all make some dumb mistakes when it comes to money at times. But over time, we generally learn to make less of them. But look, I've still made, uh, you know, I've invested in some coins that didn't do so uh, didn't do so well at first. All of my coins generally have made me money, but I have learned that I simply have to wait, particularly if I've been unlucky and I haven't checked a chart and I've bought in at a top and I end up losing. Again, I've had coins that were down 50%, so they'd lost half their value. I simply held long enough, and Matic is the perfect example. I thought I bought at a good price, but I bought at a peak, and it got down to nearly 50% less than what I bought it for, but now uh, it's up way more. So that's part of trading, and I believe that's what's going on here with all the volatility at the moment. The new money just aren't ready. They're panicking as soon as it goes, as soon as it goes down, and the smart money, they're just buying it up. All right, I've got a lot of stories to get through. There's tons of news out there, so we'll sort of move on. All right, what's really pumped in the last 24 hours though? There's got to have been some things. Yep, there we go. Basic attention token. Terra Luna, Cardano, like I said, doing extremely well. Orbs, they've come out of nowhere. I've got a story about this. Again, 700% in seven days. I am 100% taking profits. At the very least, I'm probably taking my initial investment and maybe 50% on top. And then the rest is just a moon bag. You can simply let it ride. Filecoin's been doing good for a while, so I'm happy about that. I bought that a while ago. Again, I wish I had bought a little bit more. It hasn't been one of my best performers, but I just believe in it. And it's finally starting to make some moves because I was down around sort of 20, 30% for a while there. One inch, crypto.com, Avalanche, Digibyte, near as we said, XRP. So there's definitely some good gainers. And really for me, a good gain for cryptocurrency 
is 15 plus percent uh, in 24 hours. So we've got a couple that have done that. Then really everything else is sort of just below. Nothing wrong with a 10% gain or an 8% gain in 24 hours at all, particularly if you've come from the traditional world of finance. But in a bull market, that's just like an average day. You know, you're not, you're not upset by it, don't get me wrong, but it's when you get over 15% in 24 hours, you're like, yes! And you know, if you've done 100% in seven days, Generally, my personal opinion, never financial advice, is it might be time to take some profits. You don't have to you know, get all your money back uh, if you don't want to, but I would take some money just in case you're wrong. That's me though. All right, losses. Where are we at? Nothing too bad. So again, Decentral Amber, they're still up nearly 100% for seven days. Hedera Hashgraph, same thing. Chili's, obviously, you know, they're still up a lot, so... You know, these kind of pullbacks aren't too bad. Voyager token has been coming down uh, for a little while. It's a little bit volatile at the moment. And Engine definitely uh, is, you know, coming back. It had such a good pump. Polygon still sort of, it's slowly climbing, but, you know, we have these kind of pullbacks. And I think Polygon has a long way to go. If they can live up to the hype that they're talking about, again, the multi-chain, multi-solution, they are going to be a behemoth an absolute behemoth uh, you know again this is i don't like to do price predictions because you know there's so many variables yeah there's math stuff you can work out that where they might be if all this happens but that's the problem it's if but for me if polygon can do what they're talking about i think polygon could possibly get up to you know, if it's anything like 2000 and sort of 17 by the end of it, I would say Polygon could possibly get up to maybe sort of $5, $5 $8 per coin. Now, again, that's not financial advice. I never provided. I'm not a financial advisor. That's just me kind of going based off what I saw in 2017. And if they really do, you know, and can do what they're saying. Again, the whole multi-chain thing and multi-solution... Yeah, they will be an absolute great uh, product if they can live up to the hype. All right, but again, these losses aren't too bad. Look, even VeChain down 8%, but still up 12% for seven days. So no major, major gains, but there were some good ones and no major losses in the top 100. And for me, that's where I really focus on my investing. I don't invest outside of the top 100 too much. It's not to say I don't do it at all. All right, let's have a quick look at the BTC chart. So here we can see we did have that pullback. And this is that candle. Look, we're almost at midnight now. And this is still a bit of an indecision candle, though. It's a bit like a spinning top. There's not a lot of body there. Uh, a little bit of wick on top and a bit of wick down the bottom. But really, that's an indecision candle. Indecision candles can do this, though. They can go up. But indecision candles can also do something like this, and then they go down. So we just have to wait and see. Look, it's still early in the week, but we are, you know, we're getting closer to the next sort of weekend coming and there are traditional pullbacks over a weekend. So yeah, I really don't know which way we're gonna go at the moment, but again, sort of midterm, so at least up until sort of August, September this year, I think we're going to go up. How far up we go, I just, I don't know. Um, and yeah, this whole extending bull cycle thing, uh, and I'm not sure if that's what's happening either. Uh, just It's too hard to predict. You know, I can have a bit of, excuse me, a guess, and I could say, yeah, we might be. It is possible that this bull cycle is different to the last one. Everyone's a little bit different from the last one anyway, but that it might push out longer and these cycles do start to extend. And then we have, you know, the peak of the bull run maybe next February or March, or maybe even longer out. I just don't know yet and really I don't know if I'll ever be able to pick that it'll just be you know I'll be making my mind up and decisions up as we go based on the news and what's happening on the charts and things like that and particularly what's happening in the world around you know the whole money supply as long as stimulus keeps being um, yeah basically passed out you know to everyone then Bitcoin will just continue to go up the dollar value will drop it won't be until yeah, the printing stops that we're going to find out if that will then change things or will that just still make it even more bullish again. At some stage, I'm sure we have a bit of a bear market. I'm just not sure when it's going to happen and I'm just not sure how much it's going to drop. I don't know if we'll ever see those 80% dips again. I think maybe now it might be more sort of 60, 50%. 
But again, not financial advice, just my personal opinion. We'll have to wait and see how that plays out. All right, tons of news. All right, Coinbase. So this is part of the reason that Cardano's likely pumping. It's been listed on Pro, Coinbase Pro. So Coinbase Pro is kind of the smaller one, and it's to see if they've got the liquidity, and then it makes it onto the regular Coinbase. And I would say it most likely will, and what that might do for the price of Cardano, who knows? I mean, 20% now, and there'll likely be a bit of a pullback. It's, you know, buy the rumor, sell the news. So now the news is out. Could see a bit of a pullback, but long term, that really is bullish for Cardano. So great news, and anyone who's holding Cardano is probably extremely pleased with themselves at the moment. Uh, you know, the gains that Cardano has had have been unbelievable, and they're still not fully done. So yeah, lots to look forward to for Cardano. All right, Ripple. This is really, really sad. So Ripple alleges that the SEC is withholding potentially uh, exculpated Platora, I can't even say that word, evidence by failing to provide documents on Bitcoin and Ethereum. What a load of garbage. Absolutely rubbish. That is Ripple just clutching at straws and yeah, really move on, pay the bloody fine or, you know, but stop coming up with silly crap like this because that's not true. There is no documents that are being withheld that are, you know, excupulatory. Let me have a crack. Exculpatory. Exculpatory. Something like that, evidence. I don't believe any evidence like that uh, is out there. It's just because they are so centralized in comparison to Bitcoin and Ethereum, which are so decentralized. But again, Ripple will argue that the mining pools in China make it centralized. But anyway, that's their point of view. All right, Polkadot to enhance interoperability between networks by releasing decentralized bridges. So there's a bit of polka dot news here. In an attempt to serve as the next generation uh, distributed ledger technology, Polkadot has announced plans to establish decentralized and trustless bridges to enhance operability among various networks. Parity Technologies is developing the first generic bridge that will enable all substrate based chains to connect and communicate with each other. So that's pretty big news for Polkadot. They really are starting to build something nice, you know, and they're, they're building slowly but surely. It's not, you know, kind of mad pumps that are happening for Polkadot, and I'm glad I've got a position in Polkadot. I, I probably want to buy more. I'm just not sure if that's where I'm going to get the best returns at the moment, but maybe. We'll have to wait and see. All right, Bitcoin. It's now worth more than Visa and MasterCard combined. Good Lord. So again, you know, there's this bearish kind of sentiment at the moment, but look at all this bullish news. This is, again, it's the new money panicking at the moment who just can't hold. They don't have those diamond hands. They're, they're here thinking, I'm going to put my money in and I'm just going to double it in a week or triple it in a month. It, it's unlikely to work like that. Well, you could double, triple it in a month, actually, but you're going to have to handle some volatility to the downside during that process. But look, again, doubling, tripling your money in a, in a month, that doesn't happen very often. And again, if you simply invested in Bitcoin, you're probably not going to double it or triple it in a month. I'm not saying that's never happened because it does. It's usually right at the end of the cycle when it'll do that kind of crazy stuff. But at the moment, it'd be very hard to do that. All right. Now, sorry, here, the largest cryptocurrency also recently beat the world's three biggest banks by market cap. So Bitcoin is just growing. Adoption is happening. The smart money is buying and holding. And unfortunately, the new money, i.e. the dumb money, and I've been the dumb money before, so I understand, they're selling and they're panicking. They just can't handle the volatility. All right, more Polkadot news. So integration, projects facilitating cross-chain integration with the Polkadot ecosystem have rallied to new highs while the Ethereum network continues to struggle with gas fees. We might only be a couple of weeks away from the gas fees being a lot better, not great. We still need ETH 2.0 and there's minor wars and all that happening, but this is great news for Polkadot. So REN, Ocean Protocol and Seller Network are three such projects that have led the way in facilitating cross-chain interoperability between networks, resulting in healthy increases to the number of active token holders and each project's trading volume. So again, I've, I've got some REN, I really like REN. Don't have any Ocean Protocol or Seller Network, but I do have some polka dots. So there's some great projects out there that are doing great things. You just gotta get out there and do your research. 
try not to come on and come in uh, not check any charts not understand what it's about and simply throw money at just any old random thing that's where people get burnt uh, and also understand the volatility you could get in today and lose you know near 20 30 percent of its value before it then later goes on to triple its value over months and weeks and you know maybe even years whatever it may be but you need to understand that all right judge denies xrp army a seat at the table in the case so they put a petition together for the xrp army to be able to have a seat and have a say and all the rest of it they've been knocked back now, lawyers representing XRP investors may still have a an opportunity to refile in the future though. So again, for anyone invested in XRP, that's not the end of the world just yet. And it really will be interesting to see what happens, you know, with this case. I mean, I think XRP will absolutely pump if it gets declared not a security. If it gets a declared a security, I think they're really going to struggle uh, yeah, doing too much with that. And that's going to hurt a lot of the real diehard XRP investors. All right, Bitcoin. So Bitcoin has to defend 55,406 to prevent falling into the 40,000s once again. And whale clusters suggest this. So we go down here and we can see where people were buying. And look, that $47,000 mark, that really got bought up. And particularly when it went even lower. I mean, you can't see that, but you can see a little bit one there, but if it's getting down to like $43,000, $42,000, it's just getting chomped up as well. So that's silly money, uh, dumb money, new money, whatever you want to call it, that's selling. And again, this is whales. They're buying it up. They're lapping it up. I saw a tweet from Mike Novogratz. He was saying he was buying it at 56000 He's still bullish. So yeah, smart money, buying and holding, dumb money, selling. Most of the time, again, if this is someone who bought in at 10000 and they're simply selling at 60000 to get some of their money back or at least get their initial investment, nothing wrong with that. that that's, that's fine. But people who are selling at a loss, that is just silly. Staking. So we looked at this before. So Orbs uh, burst into the market cap top 100 after 75% overnight growth compounded on 700% gains for the week. I don't know anything about Orbs other than it's a staking platform. But gee, get your money out if you're up 700%. Not all your money, but at least just your initial investment. The day prior, the project's Orbs token had been announced as the latest addition to Moon Stake's uh, staking wallet, which returns interest to users who stake their cryptocurrencies. The partnership between Orbs and Moonstake will also see the pair combine to increase the adoption of blockchain technology in the banking and finance industry, according to a Monday announcement. So that's pretty good if they're, you know, getting the traditional finance on board and all the rest of it. That's what we need. We need that, you know, that kind of back end stuff. And again, we spoke Aave is doing it with some banks that are backdooring onto Aave and all the rest of it. Back ending, sorry, not backdooring, <laughs> back ending to help, you know, get some gains because banks just can't offer anything more than 0% to maybe uh, 0.2%, 0.02% generally. And, and you know, you go to cryptocurrencies and it's all five, six, seven percent and more. So, but again, something that's gone up 700%. Just be careful, please. All right, Bank of Japan governor. So, uh, I can't even pronounce his name, but he said that experiments with a domestic central bank digital currency will begin in spring 2021. So, this is the way of the future. It is going to happen. It's going to happen very, very quickly. People just won't be ready for it unless they're obviously, you know, aware of the space it'll literally yeah it'll be the flick of a switch and it'll go digital very very quickly there's still going to be cash for the oldies uh, it's not going to simply disappear but i reckon within five years you'll be hard up to find any cash at least in the developed countries in less developed nations maybe a different story all right bitcoin revenue mining hits all-time high of 52.3 million dollars so again, there's you know this bearish kind of trend at the moment with Bitcoin price reducing, but look at all this bullish news. There's so much going on. All right, Ethereum's GPU mining landscape is bracing for change. So the GPUs were being bought up by the miners and the gamers were getting upset. Well, it looks like they're going to start making different GPUs, some for specifically for uh, gamers and some specifically for miners. So. Yeah, that's heating up. And again, that's still bullish for Ethereum. Even though the fees are high, there's obviously people still buying this stuff and people still using Ethereum as well. 
All right, Bitcoin making it into politics. So there's a politician over in the Netherlands. Now he is putting up signs saying Bitcoin is the future and it's featuring laser eyes. This is where it starts. Now he may not get into government, but if he does, he may be one of the you know people that then lead his government, the Netherlands, towards actually having Bitcoin as a reserve currency. It's a matter of time. It will happen. It's just when it's going to happen. Eventually, they can't simply sit off. A trillion dollars is a great market cap, but it's still a very small market cap in the grand scheme of things. But Bitcoin gets to a $10 trillion market cap, suddenly they need to be noticed. You know, $5 trillion market cap, they start to equal gold. And that's when, you know, governments, nations and things like that are going to go, all right, we need to get some of this Bitcoin. And that's only going to boost the price up even more again. All right. Bitcoin hands of steel, as we said, 70, sorry, 37% of Bitcoin supply hasn't moved since 2017 and 55% sat idle after 2018's bottom. So again, the, the volatility at the moment, it's new money. They're just panicking and likely selling and getting liquidated on the leverage trading and things like that. The smart money is buying it up. We checked those charts before, particularly at 47,000. There was a a lot of whales buying up and the whales they're simply just buying and holding they're not interested in selling even if it gets to some ridiculous price let's say bitcoin manages to get to half a million dollars will they sell some bitcoin absolutely they will but they're not going to sell you know they're unlikely anyway to simply sell tons of it because they know that that's just the cycle high for this time it's going to continue to go higher because it's a finite supply there's 21 million that's it a couple of million have been lost and there'll never be any more so this will naturally always go up in value or at least you know in the long term there'll be short volatility spikes and all the rest of it but long term it should just continue to go up forever it should never get to a price where it's simply not worth any more because there's just more and more people coming into the earth so more and more people are going to need it that's the way it works all right, eToro. Now they're looking at going public. It seems like it's the thing to do, IPOs and all the rest of it. eToro is doing the same and maybe a $10.4 billion valuation. So the online cryptocurrency and stock, bro stock brokerage platform eToro has announced the company is going public via a deal with a special purpose acquisition company called Fintech Acquisitions Corp V. The eToro merger is a $10.4 billion deal backed by the banking entrepreneur and fintech acquisition uh, Corp V chair, what is it, Betsy Cohen. All right, there you go. All right, minds are changing. So billionaire investor Howard Marks, he's warming to Bitcoin. Mark, who is whose worth is $2.1 billion, said his early comments on Bitcoin were a knee-jerk reaction. The traditional finance are coming, the old school, you know, heads are changing their minds. Berkshire, Berkshire Hathaway and all the rest of it, they will buy Bitcoin. It might take until, you know, the, the old guys kind of running it now finally move on. But the next person to take over will buy it if they aren't already buying it. They simply will have no choice. Adoption is happening. It's occurring. They need to get on the front foot and not be on the back foot. But again, I know there's going to be institutions and just people out there full stop they're like no i've missed it for this run i'm going to wait to buy it cheaper at the next bottom of the bear market bitcoin may never come down to fifty thousand dollars again and if it doesn't then you're just going to be buying it at higher prices again never financial advice look bitcoin could correct way under fifty thousand dollars but it just might never as well so that's the kind of gamble you take all right i'm just going to wait for the bottom of the next bear market but if bitcoin goes to five hundred thousand like half a million dollars you'd be lucky if you see it at 50,000 it might come back to about a hundred thousand a hundred and fifty thousand and even that would be huge that'd still nearly be a 75 percent drop it's just yeah it's unlikely with all the adoption but again never financial advice xrp so it has been a bit bullish we saw the charts before there's been a golden cross so it's often a bullish indicator when the 50 week moving average crosses above the 100 week but traders can get trapped on the wrong side of the market, so be careful. Until this SEC thing is sorted, I just I can't put any money into XRP. Look, if it becomes declared not a security, I'll likely miss 
quite some substantial gains, but you know XRP it did well for a while until that SEC news came out, and then it just plummeted. I lost basically pretty much all the gains I'd made, so I took that money out, put it into other altcoins, and it's done extremely well. If I had have simply sat with the XRP, I would have missed out on so more so many more gains. So again, if if I can, I will jump back across when I find out the news. It's not a security. Otherwise, I'm happy with what I've done. All right, so Bitcoin price hits new record leads to calls for more regulation. We need to be careful with this. We, we need regulation, not more regulation. It doesn't need to be more and more. And all it is is because the price is going up so high and they want to stop it and slow it down. They're trying to kill innovation because they just, they were late to the party, or at least they feel they're late to the party and they just can't handle it. Almost all currency transactions are carried out through banks or exchange houses, and this is what should happen with cryptocurrencies. I'm not sure about that because we see what's the problem with the dollar. When the flows go through regulated exchanges, it will be much easier to address possible irregularities such as money laundering and make sure that taxes are paid. I do agree with that part, but I don't believe they need to go through banks. Banks, they're old and dying. If they couldn't have got on board with cryptocurrency earlier and saw what was coming, why are we now all of a sudden going to go, oh, yep, let's you know put this new financial system through the old financial system? Hell no. The banking licenses that have been given out to exchanges like Kraken and that, I think that's the future. That's really the way we should go. Make sure they're properly regulated. And that's all it is, is we need proper regulation, not more regulation. So it says here, for this to happen, banks will need to open accounts for exchanges. So they must be regulated. And that was the problem, is a lot of these banks would not let cryptocurrency exchanges bank with them. So, you know, too bad, so sad. You couldn't see what was coming and you made it so hard for the crypto industry for so long. Now, all of a sudden, you can see the massive money and gains that are being made, but you've been left behind and you're like, oh, no, no, we've got to regulate it. Now we'll give you the chance to, you know, have bank accounts with us. Uh, how about you go shove it, fair up your derriere and, you know, crypto exchanges and that, you know, let's see what the best offer you can do for them is, not the other way around, you cheeky buggers. <laughs> All right, nearly at the end. So, so many scams, and this is uh, about a gentleman who followed a Twitter thing that he thought was Elon Musk and doubling his, you know, Bitcoin and all the rest of it, and he lost, you know, 400,000 pounds. That's a lot of money. I mean, in Australian dollars, that's nearly a million dollars. So, you know, 400,000 pounds, please be careful. And again, it even went down here. He said it all looked legit and he followed the link and it had a countdown and all the rest of it. So he thought it literally was just a limited time offer. That's how these scams work. That's what they do. Please be careful. Don't ever send your money to someone who says they're going to double it or triple it for you. They're simply going to run off with it. All right, last but not least, I know this has been a long one. So retail traders have edged out Wall Street. Retail flow into Bitcoin exceeded institutional investment in the first quarter so far this year. And again, that's why it's fluctuated so much. The smart money aren't selling at the moment. It's all the, uh, it's all the retail getting in a panic and selling. So the decline in Wall Street buyer flows may be one factor why Bitcoin has failed to hold above 61000 Definitely part of it. But they are also smart and they can see the retail money coming in. And so they can stop buying and then they can simply short the market and buy in at a cheaper price. That's what I think is likely uh, going on. And you can see here, quarter three, quarter four, and now quarter one, retail, boom, compared to, like there's, you know, uh, PayPal, they only did, what was that, uh, 10,074,116. Look at the retail. So the retail has been flooding in at the moment and they will just get chopped up. If they can't buy and hold, they are going to get absolutely caned. It's not that Bitcoin can't go much higher, but just it'll be so up and down. And as soon as they start to lose money, they'll probably panic and throw it away and, you know, sell it a loss. And then the institutions, yeah, again, they're going to buy it and hold it. They're not going to sell too much of it. They'll wait for it to go to two, three hundred thousand dollars, and they'll probably sell a quarter of everything that they bought, which will really sink the price. And they'll have made silly amounts of money, and then they've still got a ton of Bitcoin left, and they just buy more again. That's 
how it's going to be from here. Once the institutional money gets in, you really got to be careful with, you know, whether you ever want to sell it, buy it. And, you know, again, not financial advice, but just hold it. Hold it. There's a ton of ways you can make money. BlockFi, Celsius Network, Crypto.com, you know, and again, I'm not promoting any of them really except for BlockFi. I like BlockFi and there's a link down below if you want to join. But you can hold Bitcoin and then just make money and it'll make money on the way up and on the way down if you're smart and understand how to use it. All right, this has been a long one, but there was just so much news out there. And again, look at it. Most of that news is bullish. Why would you think that we're now going to go into some big bearish market? Majority of uh, institutions still aren't even here yet. It is just the early adopters that have been here. Again, we brought stories that only 5% of institutions are here. 95% were still sitting on the sideline and 75% or 80%, something like that, said they were planning on buying Bitcoin this year. And I brought you stories the other day where institutional investors, I think 75% of them planned on buying DeFi in 2021. This is 2021. There's still most likely so much more to go. But look, there's no guarantees in life. Please do your own research. Make your own mind up. I know what my mind is. I'm still dollar cost averaging. Whenever I've got money, I put it into things. But I'm checking the charts as best I can and deciding you know, what I want to put money into, what's going to give me the best returns. I've already got a good uh, base of Bitcoin. I've already got a good base of Ethereum. So really, I'm kind of going after lower altcoins at the moment, not ones way outside the top 100 but just other altcoins that will likely give me bigger gains, which I will then convert into things like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and also cash. All right, I've gone over my strategy enough times, uh, and I'll go over it again in the future for if you're new and you want to know exactly what it is. But for now, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that gain train. If you have, then you're doing pretty well. And I'll see you next time.